Welcome to the Art Channel. I'm Joshua White, and this is my colleague Grace Adam. In this film, we're visiting Parasol Unit in North London. Parasol Unit is an exhibition space dedicated to showing contemporary art. The title of the exhibition is Magical Surfaces, the Uncanny in Contemporary Photography. Sigmund Freud described the uncanny as that experience we have looking at an image that prompts both familiarity and a sense of strangeness and unease. We're looking at this remarkable uh, new piece by David Clairbout, uh, a Belgian artist, who has taken as a starting point one image of Elvis in his swimsuit from 1956 at home with his relatives. But then Clairbout has developed this image into an animation using hundreds of archival photographs of Elvis so that we get this 360 turning viewpoint of Elvis's body, his torso and his skin all derived from the information found in these photographs. Clairbout bases this image, as you say, on one photograph uh, Wertheimer's 1956 image of Elvis, very, very famous. Elvis is 21 years old here, and it's fascinating because it's that transition from anonymity to sort of superstardom. And I think it plays into our obsession with celebrity. You get a tour of Elvis's body, and it's absolutely extraordinary. So it isn't a photograph, but the photograph is the starting point. And I also think the scale is quite extraordinary, much bigger than us. So you zoom in, you zoom out, and it is absolutely mesmerizing. His sort of waxy body draws you in. Freud talks about the way in which the uncanny bridges the gap between the imagination and reality. And this work really illustrates that point so well. We get the dimples, the moles, even the hairs on Elvis's body. We get all of the texture and surfaces on the furniture and the weave in the rug. And it really plays to this contemporary fascination with the famous, that kind of impulse to reach out and touch the celebrity, mm -hmm. to have that proximity to them, to bask in their yeah. glow. And I think technically it's, it's absolutely fascinating, it's very clever, it's a, it's a beautiful contemporary piece of collage, and the photograph is the starting point, but this is not made with a lens, it's made you know, with a computer, so it's, it's, it makes us think about what photography can be now. So we're looking at an image by Julie Monaco made in 2005 and I'm carefully not calling it a photograph because it's actually made totally digitally with no recourse to a camera whatsoever. And for me it feels more like a painting than a photograph. Mm. It's actually a C-type print on aluminium, so this very beautiful smooth surface and this, this tumultuous sea reminds me of a, of a Risedale or a Turn or even a John Martin painting. It has a very romantic kind of cinematic feel about it as the sense of the sublime, mm. that sense of dread. And actually Sigmund Freud talks about in his essay on the uncanny that really influences the whole sort of theme of this show. And we can't see any kind of human mm. characters or even a ship, can we? But we just sort of perceive the enormity of nature, both in the force of the ocean and in the power of the wind that seems to be swirling and moving these large clouds. It's a fascinating image because you know, initially you kind of believe it. It feels quite familiar and unfamiliar in a truly kind mm. of uncanny way. But it is totally manufactured mm. and I find that completely fascinating. It, it taps into things we think we know but there's nothing true about it. It has this low horizon, it has this great drama and it's all too perfect, too dramatic in a way. And she contradicts that historic status of photography being about truth, mm. of documenting real scenes, real events. And so she's complicating, isn't she, the status of photography, mm. and that seems quite intentional. But nicely, this uh, photograph is sitting beside this work by Sonia Brass. So inevitably, in the exhibition, there is a kind of physical connection, but they're, they're made in very different ways. Um, Julie Monaco using the uh, computer graphics, whereas um, Sonia Brass is building a model in the studio which she illuminates and then photographs. 
I really like that obsessional way of working, actually. A uh, very old-fashioned way, making a sort of architectural model, mm. lighting it, photographing it, dressing it, and then destroying it. So as you say, they're made in very different ways, but they're both about the fantastic visual trickery, about the familiar and the unfamiliar. There's still a part of me that believes that's a photograph of a city and I'm coming mm. in on a plane. I buy it for a moment. And photography has always been manipulated. And here we know the workings out, but still it, it does draw you and it catches you for a moment. And it mimics that tradition of photography providing you with that kind of privileged view, the excitement of having an aerial sort of overview of a landscape, and that sense almost of moving within the space that you might on an aircraft. And as the lights are coming up at night, as the sun dips below the horizon. Um, but the process is so important, mm. as you suggested. The, the building of the model to photograph it, to simulate reality, while at the same time, kind of, we appreciate that it's uh, an invention. It's a uh, fiction. Yeah, I mean, it's a complete artifice. But as all photography is and has been, it, it invites you to make a narrative. Um, who am mm. I? Where is this? What's just happened? What's going to happen? So in that way, uh, really quite traditional. And historically, we must remember that photography was so associated with um, journalism, with recording facts and events. Um, so that we could always trust it. But now, of course, so many uh, contemporary art photographers are interrogating that and sort of playing with it to, to question the status of photography. McLean, Virginia, December 1978, a very famous photograph by Joel Sternfeld, is a fascinating, bizarre, uncanny image. We are confronted with a fairly horrendous image to begin with. Uh, there's a house on fire, there's an ambulance, a fire engine. Down at the front, a firefighter is, is taking time to buy pumpkins. We're quite disturbed. Um, and if you don't read around this image, you believe it. Actually, this is a training exercise. So that's the first lovely trick that he plays on us. Well, there's so much detail in this image that it uh, reminds me of a painting, almost a Renaissance painting, the way in which the eye is led into the details. And there's also a kind of premonition of, um, or a sense of anxiety in the image because we've got this raging fire that looks so violent and destructive. And then in the foreground, we have the field littered with these rotting, decaying pumpkins. It's almost like a commentary on life and its sort of fleeting quality. And inevitably, we are drawn to the question, well, what is that fireman doing when this event is taking place uh, at such close um, proximity? It is a very beautiful composition, even though it's a sort of scrappy image in a way. We have this little market stall set up to look much more kind of um, folksy than it really is. You have this, this house at the back uh, and you, I mean, I look for human presence because I want mm. people to be uh, involved. I want to know what's happening. So it really does draw you in as a narrative. And as you say, it's, it's fantastically composed. There's a great sense of depth from these crushed pumpkins at the front right over to the house, the dead trees at the back. Uh, very clever bit of composition that, that keeps you looking at the image. It suggests the decisive moment in photojournalism whereby the photographer captures that instant of interest, um, as if he's driving along a road, sees the fire and jumps out of his car. But in fact, ironically, it is something that is deceiving, mm. you know, because of this illusion. Um, but you get, to, you get all these colors that are kind of mirrored in um, the subject, don't you? In the pumpkins and the fire mm. and the sign of the farm market. Yeah, there's nothing, I think, there's no beautiful architecture in there, but the colors are amazing. These oranges, these yellows, like you say, these kind of autumnal colors. And like all the photographers in the exhibition, whether they're producing things digitally, um, Sternfeld is, is, is tricking us. It's, it's a great bit of artifice. It's really an uncanny image. And I think the detail is really fundamental to that uncanniness. It's as if we're standing here in that field a short distance away from the fireman, but trying to make sense of it. Mm. How does it hear logically? And of course it doesn't. It remains a sort of paradox. Mm, it's an enigma. Thank you for watching our film this week at Parasol Unit. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the Art Channel.